Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Roger Gilbert. I'm in the Rongo Rongo Live studio and reporting on behalf of Aquafeed or International Aquafeed magazine. Uh, I'm very privileged today to have in the studio with me Joseph Kearns. Now many of us will know Joseph or Joe as he's popularly known. Uh, Joe has worked for 43 years with a leading company Wenger Manufacturing out of the United States and he has specialized in extrusion technology. Uh, in the beginning it was any extrusion would do uh, just to get it established in the marketplace and to uh, develop products. But more recently in his career he's focused on aquafeeds and that's why we have him in the studio today. So Joe, uh, welcome to the Rongo Rongo Live video studio. Hello Roger, how are you? Good to be with you today. Yeah, well it's evening with me and I know it's first thing in the morning with you. So um, welcome to our video studio. Uh, today I'd just like to um, go over a little bit of your background before we get into the substance of the interview. But um, what made you focus on extrusion technology uh, and how has that extrusion technology changed in the last couple of decades? Well, basically it started off way back when, when I was in uh, college, I needed a part-time job. I just happened to make a claim at the local college placement center and got hooked up with Winger Manufacturing and uh, started doing drafting for plant layouts of all different top types and it just uh, turned into a full-time job when I got my engineering degree. Yeah, excellent. And, and 43 years is a long time, but you have specialized recently in, in aqua, have you? Or did you? Yeah, that, that, that's correct. The, uh, the overall goal way back when was extrusion wasn't even considered a viable option for making much of anything. So uh, we covered the gamut of human foods, animal feeds, aquatic feeds, and a lot of industrial things that uh, people came to test to see if they could actually be extruded, and if so, were there benefits. Mm. Uh, Obviously, the big one was pet food yeah, to start. Yeah. Yeah, and and um, but but extru uh, but aquaculture is coming on fairly strongly now. You know, in the way that the uh, aquaculture is developing, and and extrusion is playing a pretty important role in in keeping all those uh, fish fed. Well, that that is exactly correct. In fact, I can recall taking a client from Asia to Sabetha. All he wanted to see was extrude fish meal and wheat flour, 70%, 30, 80, 20, 90, 10% fish meal to wheat flour. And he said, perfect, how much? And he bought an extruder and we're like, uh, we don't know what's going on here. And we no internet, so you couldn't really check easily, but we finally figured out this guy was making an aquatic feed. So about that time, which was a good 15, 20 years in my career, I was challenged with finding out what this guy's mm -hmm. doing and why because obviously we may be able to sell some equipment for it. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, extrusion has greatly changed the industry with regards to making aquatic feeds due to a lot of factors. A lot of them are related to the ingredients that are used, the fact that you can make floating or sinking, which typically other machines is very hard to make floating like pellet mills, for example. But uh, in essence, it was uh, a, a system that caught on because of its abilities to make feeds the way they needed to be made characteristic wise and at a profit. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's not stopping. I mean, we know that in Scandinavia, for instance, almost exclusively uh, salmon feeds are produced on extruders. And, well, that's... Uh, and we know also that uh, single screws are coming more of uh, are becoming more popular now. They are able to produce uh, more f precise foods, but twin screws are also just as fine their place in the in the market. Uh, but you know, you've recently retired from uh, Wenger, as uh, most of us will know. Um, but you're still involved in extrusion and extrusion and aqua feed as well, aren't you? Well, I upon retirement, I got a few phone calls. <laughs> which I didn't expect, and uh, I was challenged to see if I couldn't assist a few companies, and I said, well, what the heck, why not, let's give it a shot, and uh, so here we are today, about three years later, and I'm, <laughs> I'm still plugging away. I'm not obviously doing it as a full-time thing, but it's uh, a couple of weeks a month, I'm keeping pretty busy. Yeah, 
And uh, I'm really pleased to announce that you've joined us with the online milling school for an Aquafeed course. Uh, this is a 12-week course and uh, it starts in uh, 6th of May. But um, why, you know, that it's a 12-week course. I mean, is there that much to talk about in extrusion processing for Aquafeed? Well, uh, when you're just doing it, yeah, I think there is. I could probably talk for weeks on end and never stop talking about it. But it is... Uh, something I think that there's a lot of implications. It's just not going out buying an extruder. You have to do the entire plant correctly to prepare for the raw materials you intend to use now and what you may be using later because that's ever-changing in the industry now uh, as we try to strive to remove some of the aquatic meals and go with some other protein sources that are cheaper and more sustainable. But uh, it's, it's been quite interesting in that regard because not only is it uh, the raw materials and preparing them, but what do you do after the extruder? Mm. For example, you mentioned up in Scandinavia, which was basically salmon feed. That was a tremendous problem 30 years ago because the producers wanted to put more oil in the feed. Well, mm. you had to make a feed that kept the, the oil was going to stay in the pellets and not leak out into the bag. And, and there was a lot of work done to achieve that. It was, it's really, the aquatic industry mimicked what happened in the regards to the pet food industry. Yeah, yeah. Customers bought machines to make pet food. They wanted to do something new and different or improve. Mm -hmm. They contacted their supplier, in which case we were very lucky that they were open-minded and told us what they wanted to do, which allowed the changes to be made to the equipment to achieve the end result. Mm. which was upper higher levels of fat or different sizes of products or different ingredients or the another big one was the sink up sinking rate so oh, yes. sink slowly yes. the flow can it be neutrally buoyant there's a lot of factors that everybody's still learning that doing research on fish and shrimp etc mm. as well as the companies making these feeds mm. and and who do you think should be attending this course then you know given the broad spectrum of the subject well it's uh i guess anybody that <laughs> could be anywhere from somebody that's interested in putting in a plant in as an investment to the guys that are sweeping the floor in the factory that want to learn how to move up in the in the plant and have a more meaningful position mm. and understand what what they're doing and what the potentials are yeah i mean it's it's not just buying an extruder anymore you need to determine what extruder will do what for you because there are a lot of different styles and they're all tools and they all should be used for their mm. intended purpose mm. and if you buy a tool that can't do the job well yeah. uh, that's just the way it goes you have to understand what they can do and how they go about doing it to mm. make some uh, decisions that are appropriate for your firm mm. Well, Joe, you sound just as enthusiastic now as you did when I first met you all those years ago. And it is some years ago, maybe about 20 years. But um, yeah. retirement doesn't seem to be slowing you down. Um, you know, what is your motivation? Well, I, like I said, I wasn't uh, planning on anything. I, I retired and go, okay, well, let's move on. And the next thing you know, I get a phone call from a, a company in Texas to assist them in marketing their non-aquatic meal protein products. Oh, yes. Which came from a fermentation process. So I've been working with them. And then I got a call to, uh, to do a, a job with a company that bought some equipment from Winger. In other words, help them make sure they're using the equipment right in the plant. And that's been real a real a thrill. Mm. That happened be in, in Egypt and that's continuing the guys putting in the second plant then I've had some other clients and uh, that have non-winger gear that want to understand what they're doing wrong yeah. or how can they go about and improve it so it's it's uh it's been a career where you learn a lot and it just seems like what a waste not to use it to teach some individuals what they're what they got ahead of them yeah what they're you know what they need to know well, Joe, that's that's a very gracious thing to be doing, you know, giving back to the industry knowledge uh, that you've gathered over the years and that will make a significant difference in the way that people go about their businesses and, and fish are actually fed. So it's great well, that you... Well, yeah, carry on. Yeah, no, it is, uh, 
it is quite interesting, and it's a it, this food industry in general is a great industry. Hmm. I have met hundreds of thousands of people that are all really nice. You very rarely met some guy that you don't want to talk to again. I mean, hmm. it just uh, it for lack of better terminology, it's just a, a clean, good industry to work in. Hmm. It's not like you're beating your head against the wall with some guy in a construction thing or whatever, yeah. trying to get something done. It's just common sense. Everybody will sit down and discuss yeah. it out and decide what's the best way to go. Yeah, that's what that's what I've found. You know, it's a global industry. Uh, people in all parts of the world have similar problems and, and, are, and are trying to solve those problems in a similar way. So it's it's a it's a very international uh, technology. I w I would think. Yeah, in hindsight, there's always more people, and they all have to eat. Mm. So we have to get better at what we're doing, land-wise, mm. uh, raw material-wise, mm. etc., because of the ever-growing population. And do you think aquaculture has a role to play there? Well, I certainly do, especially uh, with hindsight, after our, some discussions with you about... Uh, the protein that's available in some of these underdeveloped countries around the world, mm. they just happen to be in areas that would be great for aquaculture. Yeah. To yeah. where they can uh, learn how to raise their own fish and do it in a way that uh, they'll have some good protein for the people. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm, I think it's really that simple. I'm glad you're keeping going and uh, look forward to welcoming you on to on May the 6th, I think it is, which is a Thursday, May, uh, Tuesday, I think. May the 6th, uh, we're welcoming you on to the online milling school aquafeed production course, and that will run for 12 weeks. And uh, we hope the people watching this will decide to join us. But uh, in the meantime, Joe, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, we look forward to uh, interviewing you or talking to you again in the future. You're most welcome, Roger. I really look forward to the event. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Thank you very much, Joe. Thank you.